the Rams did not have a first round selection. They traded that away. They ended up uh, trading it away because of the whole Jalen Ramsey trade with Jacksonville. Cam Akers was the first selection in round two, number 52 overall. This ends up being good. And I had a lot of faith in Daryl Henderson, and I still do. But I think that Cam Akers, it doesn't hurt to have too many running backs. You know how it is. One, two, punch. You don't know if Malcolm Brown is going to be the hot hand. You don't know if it's Henderson. You don't know if it's going to be Akers. And then they got that 57th pick from uh, trading with Houston, trading away Brandon Cooks. And they used that to get another wide receiver in Van Jefferson. What's interesting is that J- Daniel Jeremiah of NFL Network has said that Van Jefferson's comparison is Cooper Cup. So Cooper Cup and Jefferson, let's see how that pans out for the Rams. The Arizona Cardinals, Isaiah Simmons. It's crazy to think that he fell to number eight. Linebacker, yeah, you could use him, but it wasn't like your biggest need. So, But Isaiah Simmons coming to Arizona is going to help out a lot as Cliff Kingsbury decided to draft him and his uh, massive bachelor pad. So uh, shout out to Cliff Kingsbury and his uh, real estate agents. Uh, then at uh, the third round, number 72 overall, Josh Jones from Houston. I raved about this guy while we were covering the NFL draft. I actually had the Buccaneers selecting Josh Jones uh, in the first round. Um, I had the Buccaneers trading back later in the first round, so that's why it made sense uh, to draft Josh Jones. But for Josh Jones to fall into the third round, that is huge, man. The Cardinals get that offensive line help for Kyler Murray, who seemed to be running for his life, and now maybe he won't. We'll see. But Josh Jones, Isaiah Simmons, two very good selections by the Arizona Cardinals. So moving on to the Seattle Seahawks. So in the first round in the last eight years, the Seahawks have made a move in the first round. Uh, They've traded up. They traded down. They've done some sort of move with the first round. They've never stayed with their original pick. But they decided to do that this time with the 27th overall pick and selecting a linebacker in Jordan Brooks. So Jordan Brooks was not on a lot of uh, draft boards in the first round. But the Seahawks are notorious for that. That if they like a guy, they're going to get him. It doesn't matter. Same same thing with the Raiders, which uh, we'll get into when we talk about the AFC West. But if they like a guy, it doesn't matter if they're highly touted by other analysts or anything. They do their own research. They decide for themselves, how is this guy going to fit into my team? And we're going to select him so that nobody else can take him. And they decided to take Jordan Brooks, a linebacker, um, to be the next Seattle Seahawk. And then after that, they just added a lot more depth. They added a guard in the third round, uh, tight end, Kobe Parkinson, DJ Dallas, the running back, um, and what is an already run heavy offense. So, uh, let's see what the Seattle Seahawks draft picks, what it's going to account to. And if it ends up being a good selection with Jordan Brooks at number 27, then you've got the San Francisco 49ers. This is interesting. I would say they probably manipulated the board the most out of, uh, and I know I talked about the Minnesota Vikings because they had the most amount of picks, but manipulating as far as trading away their players, trading away uh, their draft picks, they did a good job, I feel like. The 49ers moved back to number 14 and select uh, Javon Kinlaw, defensive tackle from South Carolina. So that ended up being a good pick because in an already stud defense, you got Nick Bosa, you've got Solomon Thomas, which, you know, here and there he has flashes. Um, you got rid of DeForest Buckner to the Colts, and that's why you have this number 14 overall pick. But you address that in getting Javon Kinlaw, a younger uh, player who they feel like it could be an impact as well. So in the long run, this might have been a better investment to get the younger player and draft him at number 14. And then we talked about Brandon Ayuk being a wide receiver that the 49ers could potentially take. We mentioned this before in a, in a previous uh, episode, just because of the uh, the talent and the skill set behind Ayuk. He's comparable. I, I compare him to someone like Tavon Austin. I feel like in college, Tavon Austin was a little bit better. Uh, but in Arizona State, I think Ayuk just, he did it all. He can do it all. He can 
return punts, he can return kicks, he can uh, line up in the in the backfield, and don't discredit his ability as a wide receiver. He's a good route runner. He's fast, and even for his size, for his height, he's a little bit on the shorter side. He can make some pretty good jump ball catches. You throw a fade to him in the end zone, he's got it. Let's see if that ends up being a good selection uh, for them. And actually, with them getting Ayuk and training away Marquise Goodwin, you have Ayuk, you have Debo Samuel. Those are going to be the two main guys probably, it seems like. Jalen Hurd, don't forget about him. Drafted in the third round last year out of Baylor. you got Trent Taylor, who's coming back from injury. You've got Dante Pettis, who is probably going to be gone more than likely because he's the topic of trade talks. San Francisco 49ers with the players that they got in Trent Williams. They didn't need Matt Breida. They didn't need Marquise Goodwin. Smart draft by the San Francisco 49ers and their general manager. So, love it. Love what the 49ers did.